Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be looking at Novex Engagement Extreme Ammunition. When it comes to unconventional cartridge components, ammunition manufacturers have run the entire gamut. They've gone from polymer projectiles to aluminum cased ammunition to steel cased ammunition. NGSW trials are even checking out True Velocity's entrance that is an entire polymer case with a steel base. But imagine if you will an ammunition company that put all three of those interesting new ideas into one package. Enter the Novex Engagement Extreme. You'll see here that we have a polymer copper blend projectile with a ferric stainless steel body and an aluminum base. So let's get this down on the bench and take a closer look at it. Looking at the box, we can see some claims here like lead free projectile and high nickel stainless steel. But it, you'll notice that they left out that the base is actually made out of aluminum. We got a 65 grain projectile traveling at 1730 feet per second, which will yield you 432 foot pounds of energy. And they talk about the copper polymer projectile. So let's take a closer look at that. You can actually see little bits of copper in this polymer projectile. So copper and polymer mixed together. It looks like they're casting these out. Here are those little flutes. They almost look like a prop propeller. Now they claim that this will actually cause a liquid sonic boom. And they say that it is able to do that because it creates a venturi effect as it goes in. And for the people of my vintage that are watching this, yes, that's the exact same venturi effect that carburetors are based off of to run. So looking at the stainless steel case, like I said, it's a ferric, so it's actually magnetic. And I think the reason that they used a ferric stainless steel uh, is because that this stainless steel is resistant to temperature fluctuation, oxidation, and stress corrosion and cracking. So that's kind of interesting. The aluminum that they used here is a 7078, which is an aircraft grade aluminum. So let's, uh, let's take this apart and see what's inside. Okay, so I got everything apart and I did that off camera for obvious reasons. Here's what the powder looks like. And an interesting thing happened, the case actually separated instead of the bullet coming out or the projectile coming out of the case. You'll notice how the stainless steel is torn, so it's kind of interesting how they put these together. They actually stepped down the stainless steel, insert it into the base, and then swedge it over. So yeah, kind of an interesting, interesting thing that they've done here, and it's very, very durable. Trust me, it took me probably 20, maybe 30 swings of the uh, bullet hammer to actually get this apart. So let's take this projectile out of the case now. All right, so I actually had to uh, cut the case off of the projectile, as you can see. I accidentally nicked the projectile just a little bit. So you can see how thick the casing is right there. And you can see the injection port where they actually cast these out. So yeah, kind of interesting where they inject the, uh, the little mold that these sit in. So let's get the scale out, turn it on. We're gonna make sure it's zeroed. So we're gonna go to grams, we've got a 50 gram weight here. And we got 50.08. So yeah, pretty pretty close to 50 grams. Good enough for what a good enough for the business we're doing. Go down to grains, we're gonna put the projectile on there. It's down there properly. Looks like 69, make sure you can see that, 69.4, which is just a little higher than the 65 grains that they're advertising. So let's take a look at the actual weight savings of this type of projectile. Get another scale out here, wait for it to clear. And we're gonna grab 10, 115 grain, nine millimeters. I'm all on this scale. See the weight's coming up to about four ounces and one quarter. Let's take all these off. We're gonna grab that a little more in the frame. We're gonna grab 10 of these new projectiles. And you can see it's two ounces, two and a half ounces, so almost half the weight which is really interesting. So anyhow, some one more thing to consider. Well, 
let's take these uh, these projectiles out to the range and let's see what kind of velocities they're going to be getting. Since we know that they're a little bit heavier, let's see what kind of velocities they're getting. See if the uh, foot pounds of energy they're advertising is actually accurate. And then let's uh, let's try some different uh, barriers and different targets and see what these actually do out on the range. All right, so we're here out on the range. I uh, got some 115 grain IMI die cut. We're gonna be shooting the left target and the right target. We're gonna shoot the Novex ammunition. We just wanna basically see like what kind of grouping we're getting out of it and see if the Novex ammunition has any raise or drop in elevation because it's so much lighter and so much faster than conventional nine millimeter. So we're gonna be shooting both these targets with the Walter PPQ. So this is a shot obviously with the IMI and uh, you can see the group right here, eh, probably measuring in at uh, right around three inches, let's say, nice and center of the target. The Novex you can see is just a little bit low and to the left, but uh, you can also see that it's just a little bit left on that IMI stuff as well. But this grouping was actually a lot tighter. We actually got around two and a half inches of group size on this one. So at least we know where this is going to be hitting now. All right, so because this Novex ammunition has these interesting flutes on the projectile, we want to see what it does in clay. I got 10 pounds of clay right there. We're probably eight feet away from it. Don't really want to miss one to hit center mass, get a good measurement out of this. So uh, I'm going to be shooting that out of the Walter PPQ again. We'll see what it does. Wow. Let's take a closer look at that. Well, that was pretty impressive, I'd have to say. I don't even know where the tape measure is right now, but uh, yeah, you can fit your fist right clean through that hole. Looks like six inches by about five inches straight through hole. We're gonna have to pound this clay back together and uh, try it with the IMI die cut just to get some sort of baseline. The IMI 115 grain die cut ammunition. We've got a big, big hole. And actually, this is really interesting. If we get the camera in here, I don't know if the camera can see this. We got the entrance hole. It took a hard right turn and some of the jacket went out of the right side right here, that hole right there. I don't know if you can see that. But we've got copper jacket. We've got a good bit of lead projectile in here. We got more jacket and lead. There's some more lead projectile. And it didn't really create any kind of hole. I mean, we've got a giant crevice here, don't get me wrong but we didn't see the same thing that we saw with the Novex ammunition. So let's get a little measurement here so you guys have some scale. Looks like eight inches by about four and a half inches or so. So yeah, that's what the, uh, the die cut stuff does to clay. All right, so we're just gonna shoot the clay block with a standard 115 grain full metal jacket. I believe this is blazer brass. About one and a half inches by about one inch. Turn the block around here. And there's our exit wound. Got about 
about three inches by about three inches. And it's cylindrical. So that's just what full metal jacket does. Novex claims that this particular ammunition does 1,730 feet per second. So let's get the chronograph up and running. We got it right there. Let's see what it can do. We just did a test shot. That test shot was 1122. Let's see what the Novex can do. Another question is going to come up with a lot of people, what about barrier penetration? I know this is important to a lot of people out there, so we're going to test that. But I'm going to test it a little differently. We're going to be using clinker tile. Now, clinker tile is some of the strongest tile I have ever been around ever in my life. I've literally dropped sledgehammers on this. They won't crack as long as it's laid right. Um, it's extremely expensive. It's really, really good stuff. I highly recommend you looking into it. Anyhow, if the projectile isn't broken up completely by this ceramic tile, is what I'm assuming they're using some sort of ceramic. It'll have to actually damage the little piece of pine we have behind it and we'll see what it does so first we're going to be using the walter ppq as, again we're going to be shooting the 115 grain imi die cut we're going to be shooting the left target we're going to see what it does and then we're going to do the novex on the right side and see what that does just a little bit cracked right here and this one's just fine and of course now there's clinker tile everywhere that we got to clean up so that was our barrier penetration test so the next concern people i can foreseeably see having with this ammunition is feeding issues well we got a walter ppq here we're just going to do a quick backup see how it does All right, so that was the ammunition from Novex, and honestly, I was pretty impressed with all of the tests, except for one, and that was the velocity test. It did come under an awful lot from what it is actually advertised to do. And that's really all I have for you, so uh, remember that loose is fast, brakes only slow down, and boutique ammo is sometimes the only ammo left on the shelves. So remember to be safe, have fun on the range, and we'll see you next time.